In this episode, I make the annual pilgrimage to an ancient volcano, almost as deep as it is old, for the Easter regatta. This is Lake Bull and Mary in southwestern Victoria, which is said to have been formed by a violent explosion of uh, two or three overlapping volcanoes about 40,000 years ago. For my family, like many others, attending this regatta has become like a religion itself. It's one of my favourite events on the entire calendar, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. The camping's awesome because the crater walls are covered in nice green grass, and you can pitch your tent right next to your boat so you just stumble out of your tent in the morning, grab a nice coffee, whack your rig up, and off you go. But to prepare properly for the biggest event of the season, I had to take the week off work and get my boat sorted. Okay, so it's, um, what, Monday today. Um, it's been just over a week since the last time I sailed this boat. Um, thanks to everyone that watched that uh, last video and liked and commented on it. That was a massive effort to make that uh, episode. So I'm glad that people, uh, yeah, enjoyed it. As you will have heard in that uh, run where I was doing about 23 knots, um, the boat was making this kind of gurgling sound where it was like this slurpy noise. So I figured that could have been three things. Uh, as you'll have seen, I probably had a bit much tension on the um, wand elastic as well as the elastic connected to the top of the bell crank, pulling the bell crank forward towards the mast stump. So there was quite a lot of pressure where the wand was hitting the water. On top of that, yeah, it could have just been a bit of weed. So I might have had sort of holes getting punched in the water as the wand went along and then the foil following along into kind of aerated water. Um, the other thing is it could just be this foil doesn't really look like it's ever been fed much. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, considering I've got the Easter egg out of this Friday, and it's now Monday, and I leave on Wednesday, so I've got like one day, um, is I'm just gonna tape half the foil, and then I'm gonna uh, put some fairing compound on that I found in my uh, the corner of one of my friend's garages. I was over there working on the trimaran, which will be released in an upcoming video. And I saw in the corner of his shed on the bottom floor, he had this old tin of paint. And that was exactly the stuff I needed. So I asked him if I could have it and he said I could because he got it with a boat he bought years ago. And uh, yeah, I think that's just going to be enough to do the job. So I'm just going to tape off the foil about here and then I'm just going to uh, paint a couple of layers of uh, yeah this two-part epoxy uh, primer on it. And then I'll just uh, sand it. It's really hard to find information on the internet about uh, how to do this correctly. So. The best I've been able to find is a combination of this 2017 post from Phil Stevenson uh, on Sailing Anarchy and also some tips on the Maguire Boats website uh, where they've sort of made a little PDF about how to do it. So I'm going to follow Phil's instructions because that seems like the, uh, the best information I've got. I managed to track down a heap of wet and dry sandpaper at uh, Super Cheap Auto. So that's a good source to sort of keep up your sleeve because uh, Bunnings only really sell it by the roll but you can get uh, all different grades. Um, by the sheet, it's super cheap. So I've picked up everything from about 300 grit all the way up to uh, 2000 grit because uh, as you can see in Phil's post, he says that's what people were using back then. So um, yeah, I'll give it a go and we'll see if it makes any difference because uh, yeah, it felt like it was topping out at about 23 knots the other day uh, with that ventilating noise. So yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> I've got my uh, two-part Norglass chip shape that I got off my friend. Uh, it's been sitting in his garage for ages, so we'll see if it works. Picked up these little measuring cups, so three to one ratio. So I'm thinking I'll do, I don't know, I might do 30 and 10 first, just to see if it's enough. I can always make more, because I don't have a lot of paint, but I just don't want to, um, yeah, use it all accidentally. <music> Thank you. 
Okay, so it's um, Tuesday morning, going down to Easter tomorrow. Uh, the paint's uh, pretty much dry on my foil, but as you can see, it's uh, yeah rough as at the moment, so that's going to need a good sand. I'll just give it a bit longer to cure. In the meantime, I've got a few little odd jobs to do. So uh, the other day I was watching the um, Swift Moth rigging video, and um, yeah, I noticed that Luther referred to the angle of the bell crank um, is quite important and uh, that makes sense and I figured as you can see here so my push rod is sitting or my bell crank sorry is sitting quite far back when it's in neutral so it can only go back to there before it's maxing out it can come a long way forward so I can get a lot of negative flap but my positive flap is quite limited so as you can see to fix that I've got to wind out the push rod that goes between the bell crank here and the flap of the foil down there. So I've got to take off this screw. So yeah, bear with me and we'll see how we go. I also checked with Bugs who invented the Bugs cam, obviously, and he said, yeah, at rest, that it should be here, not there. So that was probably making a big difference. Uh, I'm not sure if it was limiting how much down flap I was getting, but it may well have been. So definitely worth fixing before I start stuffing around putting 3D printed camera mounts on. I think that should have been a bit tighter. So I was super worried that this was going to be like corroded on, but it's not. It was finger tight. So now I'm just going to see how much thread I've got. a lot more vertical than it was before so if I go all the way back it still almost ends up in the same place so I must have ended up with a fair bit more flap down and uh, can still go all the way forward so perfect that could have sucked but it didn't okay back at camper down got really lucky with the breeze we've just got here I've done a few hours of boat work this morning sort of meant to be a 17 knot southerly at about 4 30 then the rest of the regatta looks like it's going to suck so we're going to get out there now and uh have a quick sail see how all my modifications have gone and uh yeah hopefully it's a good one just walking along the edge of the drop off this being sort of overlapping volcanoes 66 meters deep uh, out in the middle just trying to get a decent angle to launch off and i'll sink the rig And a little bit more wind. A little bit of breeze filling in here, sort of all the way up to where that Flying 15 is. I reckon this one up here. Yeah, yeah. It's not very often you go moth sailing and the sound of the cows is annoying. There's heaps of them on the top of that hill. And there's some just over my shoulder here too. Breeze has just stopped, so hopefully there's something coming. Clouds look like they're moving around a bit. Well, that doesn't mean much here. I'll just keep sitting and waiting. And maybe this gust, predict wind said this sort of southwesterly had come in from the sea. So that's what this sort of feels a bit more like.
Yeah, it felt really good. This is my friend Brandon from Malaysia. He used to sail laser radials there. Sails a Sabre here. Never sailed a Martha, a foiling boat, so I thought today's a good day. Speed on! That was close, sir. You ready? Yep, ready. Three, two, one. Yep, good job. <laughs> okay. One. One. <laughs> Not enough breeze to foil, but so cool to just be cruising along. So as you can see, I had a sensational sail and I was really happy with the boat. Next time, it's a good Friday. So first race of the regatta. 
uh, I have an absolutely fantastic ride out to the start, but then after that, I'm plagued with uh, mysterious foil control issues. So uh, tune in as I uh, battle my way around the course, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can finish the race and then figure out what's going wrong with this boat.